Hey guys, so if you pay attention to the audio of this video, you will notice that it's not quite as good a quality as it usually is for this channel. And that is because right now I'm using the uh, in built-in microphone for the camera that I'm using rather than the handy H1 Zoom, which is the audio recording device I usually use. And that is because today I'm gonna to be making a video talking about the handy H1 Zoom and my microphone setup and how I record audio for my videos. Now. You Usually what I do is I have my uh, video camera which is a Canon Vixia and I have a uh, an audio recording device, usually the handy H1 zoom, in a location closer to, uh, to my mouth so that you get a clearer audio reception and then of course I have, I am then free to frame up my video as I wish. The advantage of doing that is not only do I get to position my microphone and my camera separately, which works really really well if I'm recording um, things like like panels and seminars as well because it allows me to record the video from the back of the room and the audio from the front of the room while being like at two separate places but with it also has the additional benefit of if this uh, microphone fails to uh, record the audio properly or if there is some kind of interference I still do have the audio from the camera itself which although is not going to be as good, gives me a fighting chance and means that for a lot of, you know, I might not necessarily, it could very well be the difference between me throwing away footage and not throwing away footage, um, depending on, on varying factors, of course. So why do I use the Handy H1 Zoom? Well, um, the price point is actually quite nice for me. You can get it for 70 British pounds. That's about 100 US dollars. I don't know if it varies more um, than that from country to country, but, uh, that is not too bad for the quality of audio that you actually get, at least in my personal opinion. Also, why it also why it's also specifically good for people that want to record on a budget is not only does this record audio locally, which means that you can plant it as an audio device um, or use it as a as a wireless microphone for interviews. It works really well for things like that, and also because it stores the audio locally in the device itself, it means that it's it's a, it's a simpler system. Uh, it means that there's there's no like wireless transmission or you don't have to make sure that you've, you've packed the right cables or all, or anything like that. It Because it records locally and it records to the micro SD card, that's all you have to worry about. It's uh, it's a very simple process, a very straightforward process. There's very little that can sort of get interfering and, and go wrong with it. And if it does, you still have the audio from the camera um, if you're if you're doing the what's called I think it's double track audio uh, audio recording, so that is how I choose to do it, and that is why I choose to use the Handy H1 Zoom. Decent price, decent quality of audio. Uh, not only can it be used as a um, audio recording device in its own right, but it also uh, can be plugged into your computer using uh, the USB cable that it comes with and be used as a direct input microphone, USB microphone there as well. So if you want sort of like one microphone to, to be used in a whole variety of situations, I can't recommend the, the Handy H1 Zoom enough. And I'm, you know, I don't have like an affiliate link at the bottom of this page and I'm, I'm not being paid or anything to, to promote them. I've got to say, this is one of the best audio recording devices I've, I've ever used for the price that it comes at. And I will be upgrading to the Handy H4 um, not, too, not too long from now, simply because um, I want to improve the audio quality, but everything else about the product um, is, is really quite nice. There is one disadvantage that I will point out, and that's that with the Handy H1, there is it has a the same screw fix um, as a normal video camera. So it fits on all your video camera tripods and stands and stuff like that. And you can also get... Um, uh, screw fix converters so that you can mount uh, the Handy H1 to microphone stands as well, but you have to buy them separately. So with the right fittings, you can actually fit this as a, onto microphone stands and to camera stands, which makes it particularly useful for, 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 for placing as well. You can also get lots of very small, very cost, you know, very cheap tripods to, uh, to, to prop it up as well. It also fits um, windshields quite nicely as well. So if you're recording outside and the wind is just cutting across the microphone, you could put like a dead cat on top, which is what they're called quite, quite amusingly. So yes, uh, I've got to say, 
absolutely great piece of equipment i'm only upgrade but the the upgrade the handy, handy h4 come in at around 200 british pounds which is significantly more expensive obviously but i'm hoping just to get that solid boost in audio quality um and um and, and maybe a few extra fun features to play around with uh it records t uh to mp3 and uh, wave files but to be honest i really only record to mp3 just to save space but it takes sd cards so you can you can fit quite a lot of audio on there before you even need to worry about space uh, you could record literally days of audio um, and also it takes one double a battery which is really quite good and it lasts a significant amount of time on one triple a battery i usually use rechargeables but you can also uh recharge uh, not recharge it but you can power it from the micro usb cable that it comes with as well but I, but you can't charge the bat batteries through it not that you need to it's not like double a um battery chargers are particularly expensive uh, it also sets the um audio level automatically with a switch on the back or you can set it yourself depending on the event i tend to set it manually if i'm in like an environment that i can control like here for example microphone's about a foot away from uh from from where i'm speaking and um, and, and sort of all the environmental stuff is, is going to be quite quiet. However, if I was to be recording, say, like a panel or a speech or something like that, I'd set on the automatic because it would adjust then for things like uh, applause and um, quiet sections and loud sections and so forth. So it sort of uh, kind of sets the right volume uh, for you. It's by no means perfect because obviously it has to set the right um, levels retro, you know, retroactively kind of, or, or, or it has to reactively, I guess is, is the word that I'm uh, I'm thinking of there. So you've got that slight delay where, oh, if, if the round of applause starts happening, it's going to max out. It'll unmax out very shortly after, but because it's obviously uh, got to um, take in that sort of information and compress it on the fly, it's gonna there's going to be that little bit of a, of a of a reaction that it can't get ahead. Uh, but um, but you can always sort of uh, rectify that in things like Audacity and video editing software later. So yes, uh, I'm going to wrap up now, but um, I thought I had made a video talking about how great the H1 was. I have talked about how great it is on podcasts before. Uh, what I have done is I've linked to a podcast where I talk with James, a friend of mine, about audio. It's a little bit more geared towards the audio on things like movie sets and professional setups, but um, it's just a nice bit of a chin wag anyway if you're interested. I've re-uploaded it to my second channel and link to it down in the description below but it's an old podcast uh thanks very much for watching and until next time i've been chris way and you've been awesome take care now